Hi everybody, Richard Maud from Vemetrader here. And uh, this session is gonna be going into some more advanced features of Vemetrader. If you're here, I'm assuming you already know how to use Vemetrader. You know what support and resistance is. Uh, We're just gonna talk with like, how can we take all the different things we've got and apply them uh, into different strategies to get ourselves some bigger risk rewards, hopefully. Uh, nothing in here should be considered financial advice. We're just gonna have a look at some fun and possibly put some trades, but if you do that, that's of your own accord, disclaimer done. Um, all right, so we're here today because Anthea was asking in Discord, hey guys, um, I'm, I seem to be having some pretty low risk reward entries happening and then Vem is cutting them off because of the minimum risk reward. Uh, instead of reducing her risk reward, what could, what could we be doing differently to help out with that one? Um, is that a pretty good summary of it? Pretty much, yeah. I um, yeah, just kept getting closed out because uh, my risk to reward was uh, my. I'm always aiming for a two to one risk to reward when I trade. I know that if I set it at one point five, it gives me a little bit of wiggle room um, just to be able to enter into, and then of course I can then adjust accordingly when I when later on. Um, however, I'm finding that these are you know one to ones 0.8 to ones just just outside that 1.5 some of them have been 1.49 i remember there was one I was like, oh, God. Oh. <laughs> you know and it, it yeah and i just wanted to see it's i think when i counted them up there's at least you know it's probably about a good 10 percent of my trades 10 to 15 percent of my trades that aren't entering just because i haven't tweaked this risk to reward and i said i don't want to drop it any lower because because I know that's going to start to really, you know, that that really doesn't suit suit my trading, um, my my trade plan. So, yeah, just want to look at what else can we do. What are the things that we can potentially tweak? Um, sure. Things like candle close. Um, yeah, yeah, just have a bit of a chat and see what we can do. So, all right, sure entry. thing. Um, so I'll come into this one without really an agenda of how to attack this problem, but I can think of two ways to do it. One, we could look at some of your trades yep. um, and pick up a few that we could have a look at and start to and critique them. Um, or another approach could be, I could show you how I tend to use Vema and then we could take a look at that and then go to yours. But I think it might be more interesting to put your one first. Okay, I was gonna say the other way, but cool, we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanna go the other way, that is perfectly fine. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly mute everybody here because there's some awesome background noises more mute, 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 mute. how do you actually mute people in this oh there it is i've got the button there we go and oh reese is on here g'day reese how you doing hey reese going on guys yeah good good to see you man good to see you loving your hair thank you <laughs> it's uh it's scheduled for a trim 3 p.m thursday so enjoy it while it lasts <laughs> uh nice nice all right and uh and quickly before i forget to say this one um waz your beard is just super cool man i am straight up admittedly very jealous of it so two thumbs up to you love it work in progress <laughs> like my trading like your trading hey the trading is always a work in progress uh okay so Anthea, where are we going to start Sh me show stuff or you show stuff um let's you show stuff i think that's all a good right. way and then We'll um, play with mine after that. Sure thing. All right. So I'm going to share you know, my screen. No, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to go here and then I'm going to share my screen. Don't have anything awkward open. Nope. Good. Uh, all right. Cool. So where do we start here? Let's go to the start charting button, which we're calling it start charting was actually Reese's idea. So shout out to him because it used to be like let's trade or something else and start trying to specialize up anyway all right so to talk about this uh a quick spot to go for is the mute button and find who is not on mute sorry bond i'm gonna mute you and leisha gonna mute you as well and anthony you've got the power to unmute yourself and ask if anyone has any questions as you're going please just just interrupt straight away hey all right so first off I think a good way of attacking this one will be talking about how the idea of Vema came about really quickly. And it was originally from there being trends and I could see that there were trends that were happening. Uh, and 
price would just come and hit these things absolutely near on perfectly to the dollar if you could draw the line. Uh, and then what happened is I noticed that when a price would go above it, it would go, hey, it's awesome, that's good. And then it would usually go on a big giant rocket ship. And that's when I started building Vema. Hey, I want to, th there's clearly bots that are happening here. As soon as price goes above that, I want to catch what those bots are doing. Um, but then a problem happened, uh, which is the bear market of 2017, 18 came along and prices just started to do what they're doing now. Oh shit. Um, and so whenever it would happen, that would be a whole bunch of people who were then looking for it to go, I'm going to push the price back down. Okay. That sucked. So then along came the idea of let's make a bounce strategy, which is it comes close enough and then it falls down. Um, but so what I originally started doing was as soon as price would come up to the level, uh, I would have to take an or take an entry as soon as price came to the uh, came to the trend line. But the problem there became, well, where does the stop loss go? So I would just arbitrarily put the stop loss at some position. Now you couldn't put it ridiculously close because your leverage was too high. But uh, so where did I put it? Just anywhere I could. But I did know that if I could go to get a good entry on a uh, on a descent line, then it was always going to bounce off, bounce off, bounce off, bounce off. So I just had to get that one good entry with a tight stop loss and I could be happy from there, uh, knowing that the trend line was going to keep on descending. So then what I did is thought, uh, all right, so let's go for uh, this idea of looking for a bounce, uh, like not just hit the trend line and take a short, but if we can find a descending line, if we can have price hit it, and then actually come back down a little bit. That gives me the idea that I have now got a confirmed bounce. I'll take the entry here. And because I'm now thinking that the price is going to follow down with this trend line, it meant that I could put my stop loss just a tiny little bit on the other side of the trend line, which is where that concept of stop loss other side of trend line came from. So that then meant that it would be like a 1% and then a 0.25% giving a stop loss of 1.25%. Uh, and so that meant, cool, that gives me a pretty good entry and I'm expecting it to just to continuously fall down. Uh, so that is actually shows up in my analysis as well. If I come over to this and I look at my crosses versus my bounces, um, you can see my crosses here. Well, I've got a lot more crosses because I'm tied emotionally to the idea of crossing and just smashing it and going for it. Number of trades, 62, whereas the win rate is not all that good, shit. Uh, whereas if I compare that to bounce, all of a sudden I'm taking less bounces, but they're much, much, much better entries. I've got 30 of them and my win rate is much nicer. My risk reward is much nicer. Uh, so shout out to Reese. It was because of him that I started doing that uh, and looking for less trades and better entries. Uh, and in fact, that's how Reese and I met. Anyway, this is not a history lesson. Um, so the idea here is um, that was interesting. But so the idea of bounce was never actually to me, I'd never even considered putting bounce at a horizontal level and looking for it like that. I never even considered it. Uh, and then I saw Reese started using it and Donnie started using it. All they did was just this flat level. They, they never used it on a downtrend. Like, that's what it's for though. What are you getting wrong? I'm not the one who's wrong, you are. Um, and so that's where that idea came from. Um, but so that's how I usually, uh, I'm kind of rambling here. That's how I get my stop losses kind of close-ish is I know that risk to reward is a function of how far away your stop loss is to your take profit. That, that's purely it. Uh, I don't consider position size anymore. I don't give a damn about position size. I just let Vema take care of everything. Uh, so when I'm going to clear up this whole thing, if I'm looking for a trade now, I will go ahead and find a slopey line like this. Just pretend that this is perfect. Um, I'll then go ahead and add on a trade and say short and bounce. Uh, I personally always use a distance to activate of 0 0.1 uh, because it coming to the line. I've missed too many trades where it's come to the line and not come close enough to the line. Uh, so I go, in this case, close enough is good enough, though I'll never admit that to my kids. Uh, and then I also put in always a distance to confirm. So some people don't like it. I, I don't know if Reese uses distance confirm, but I, I, I will not trade without putting some kind of distance to confirm in there. That gives me the idea that it has come up and it has reversed. Uh, so there's my confirmation that it's going to go away. Um, so with a bounce strategy, I don't use candle close. I don't care. I, yeah, personally don't care. It might come up and it goes, hey, cool. You put this green candle here. It came up and then it reversed down a little bit. You can see that little wick that it had on the green one there. That's a good enough entry for me. I'm going to take it. Like price has hit it and it has moved down. And because I know that this is real time monitoring of price, great. That means it has gone 
and it has fallen. Um, and so when I'm doing that one, I'm going to put this as a, a horizontal line so it's easier to visualize. This one here, give me this, put it here. Now it's a flat line. Let's put it over here. There we go. Oh, look, a perfect break and retest. Short bounce 0 0.1. Uh, and go distance to confirm of one. So this is what I like about this part. If you look at what we've got here, we've got a zero and a zero here. The indicative entry is on the line. If I then set that to 0 0.1 of an activate, we'll see that it's going to move slightly away. I'll zoom in so we can really see that one. There we go. So distance to activate of zero, the indicative entry is on the line. If I put a distance to activate of 0.1, then it's gonna move my indicative entry a little bit further down. Uh, so then my distance to confirm, because I don't wanna go close enough is good enough, close enough is good enough and it fell away. I put a distance to confirm of less arbitrarily in this case, say one. I visualize that, I, I don't ever, I'm not committed to a single value. It is purely the distance to activate that I am 0 0.1 for some reason, everything else is purely visual. All right, so now that tells me, well, if it has come up and bounced off it, that tells me that I can actually put my stop loss pretty close to my alpha line. Um, so what do I do next? I just move it just straight down. I don't care where it goes, just close enough. There we go, good enough. And then I'll put my take profit into place and I'll go, radio. do I think that price can move? Whoa, do I think price can actually move that far first? And if I go, yes, it can. All right, cool. Can I get, get my stop loss tighter? So other people will say, no, no, it should go on the other side of structure. And now I'm at a 1.5 to one trade um, because here's the structure I'm looking at, that little pivot there. Whereas I personally, I'm not looking for that. I'm going, look, I've got a confirmed bounce. I've to my, my trade plan says that price has hit and gone the other way. So I can bring my stop loss pretty damn close to the other side of the trend line now. Um, and so that's how I go, cool, I've got my entry, I've got my take profit, where does my stop loss need to go to make me a happy trader here? So it's a 3.7, ah, oh, you know what, I'm going to move it a little closer here. And now I'll start to look over here and see what have I got, close, 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 and a wick. Uh, and a wick, cool, so I might go just the other side of the wick, which it already is, there we go, I've now got a 4.73 to 1. So I am not using candle close on a bounce. I'm going, where's my entry? Where's my target? If I've got a target down there, where do I need to bring my stop loss to to make this be an interesting risk reward? Uh, boom. So how? any questions on that one, Anthea? No, that's, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's going to definitely help. Um, yeah, because I, I, as I think in the thing, I, you know, I used to always go candle close just for my confirmation. Yep. Um, because that's just part of my trade plan. And that's for how I used to trade without Vema. You know, you want to have that confirmation. But with what we've already got with Vema, you can kind of take away those things. You know, if you've got the distance con to confirm, that's pretty much, yeah, it's still a fail safe. It's just a way that the system does it for you rather than you doing it manually. So, yeah, yeah, that's good. So if we look at this one here, let's say we had this same setup and I'm specifically looking at these two candles here. Uh, let's play clean up on some of that, get rid of it. We know where we're looking, clean up the diagram, clean up the diagram, there we go. If you had this same setup here with a distance to confirm of what we've got 1% and we had a candle close, that means we're gonna be waiting for the candle to close down here, which all of a sudden now we're at a two to one. So it hasn't moved that far. All we've done is we, because as we're increase, because we've got a take profit and a stop loss that are set in position, when you're increasing your stop loss, you're decreasing your take profit. And so you're not just kind of moving it a little bit. Every move you do to your entry is going to be effectively double attacking your risk reward. Yeah. Um, and so well, Vemo will go, cool, I want to have a bounce and I want to use it and operate on candle close. I think Mike uses them. That's great. Um, on bounce, cool. Then there, that's that's the impact it's going to have. Just that slight little 1.6% move is going to go from a 4.7 to a 2.1. Yeah, it's a huge, huge difference. <laughs> There we go. So now that is how I use the bounce strategy in Vema. Uh, sometimes it works and great. I get pretty good PLs if you look at my dashboard. 
Hooray, Richard gets the brag of 8% and 11% and of 5%. Um, you can see here where sometimes it doesn't and I'll have quite a few losses, which is okay. But for me, I know that my risk reward is pretty good. And so I can have a few losses and I know that my big profits are gonna more than pay for those little exits. Uh, and so there are most definitely times when I will get stopped out on some of these things because my stop loss is tight. Uh, but I'm doing that to increase my risk reward. Uh, and so it backfires, yes, sometimes, um, but it also can pay off really, really well. And when it pays off well, it fucking goes nice. Awesome. But so that is the bounce strategy. If I am using a cross, long and a cross, I am absolutely always going to use an operate on candle close. Always, I will never use a cross without a candle close uh, because I want to see that it gets on the other side of the line and it goes somewhere. Uh, <laughs> if we had a looking back here, we had an operate on can a, uh, a a trade at this point, a long cross. We got wicks loss, wick loss, wick loss, crap. Um, so if I'm using a cross, I'm always going to use an operate on candle close always. But what I'll do with that is I will actually increase my minimum risk reward to something bigger, say a three. And the reason for that is if we go long cross operate on candle close, and we're going to pretend we're playing with it over here, I'm going to move my take profit up, my stop loss. Uh, this is one where I all usually will go for where can I put it on the other side of the trend line that is a bit of structure. Why are you long crossing there and being funny with your indicator of entry? Stop, add, long, cross. That was a bit strange, don't know what that was. So if I'm doing a, uh, a long cross, this is not one where I'm gonna go ahead and bring my, uh, my stop loss really close. I'm always am going to look for structure in this case. Uh, so then I'm going, well, well, a bounce is set, the for me, it's set a take profit, then put my stop loss somewhere. For me, a cross is set my stop loss somewhere and look if the risk is any good moving my take profit in there. So I reverse it for a cross. Um, <clears throat> all right, so if we were looking at these particular things, what I'm always looking for on this is I've got a 3.9 to one risk reward. If that's up there and that's up there and I'm going my take profit and stop losses in place, I'm happy with that. Uh, I then go, well, my minimum risk reward has to be three. This is why I've probably got not enough, my, my crosses are not doing too well, the more I think about this uh, and why I'm switching to break and retest now, um, is because if you look at that, we've got a 3 point, uh, sorry, 3.9, this one, the, the take profit of the stop loss isn't perfectly lining up with those dotted lines, hence the difference. But if we look here, how much of a wiggle room do I have until I'm less than three? Ah, not, not that far. Like, oh crap, that's a very, very, very tiny thing there. So I need to get a candle close in that 0.6 of a range or I'm not going to take it. Or the, sorry, the system's not going to take it. And the idea of going and decreasing my risk reward now tells me, well, hey, hang on, that's going to lead to lots of these little spiky bits here and, uh, and, and not the bigger profits. Just something um, quick on that, um, Richard. Um, I found um, I usually trade on the four hour, um, but I found if I uh, chart on the four hour, um, the candle closes on the four hour would go right in and like just uh, it wouldn't enter because my risk reward was too low. So what I've actually been doing is I've been charting on the four hour and then dropping my actual trade plan down to the one hour. So it actually catches the break earlier. Um, I just need to adjust my um, trigger a little bit sometimes. Um, yeah, I found that um, there was a huge difference between my, my uh, risk to reward ratio and win rate um, when I was doing uh, one hour compared to four hour, even though I chart on the four hour. It's huge, like double sort of difference. So that, that's really interesting, Ryan. So you're going, I'm, I'm charting on a four hour. Let's pretend that we've got this same little spot here. Uh, yeah. You're going long. I'm going to go across. We'll use a candle close. There we go. Yep, everything looks good on the four hour. I am using candle close and I'm going to switch to the one hour and then go ahead and press add. That's right. Um, after I do journal and stuff. Yeah, after journal and stuff. <laughs> I do make sure, um, like if you scroll, if you go across to the left a bit, um, the entry may be a little bit different. Like you might have to bump it up a little bit more. Yep. But um, I found that I got way better entries uh, doing that. So you, what do you mean by bump that entry up a little bit more? You mean I might have to move the trend line, the trigger up a little bit to, to satisfy it? Yeah, to satisfy the one hour candles. 
Yeah. Um, oh, okay, cool. So now you're on the one hour, so therefore it is a higher popper. Yeah, yeah, slightly higher. But you'll notice that the um, the candles are obviously quite like a bit smaller. And when you do, because I don't know, when I chart on the four hour, I find that other people are probably looking at the four hour as well. Um, that if I catch the entry on the one hour, it's got the initial tiny move. And then after that, there's a huge candle. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I don't know. It just made a huge difference. So, uh, yeah, that's my strategy at the moment um, on the cross with candle close. It works really well. Nice, man. Nice, nice. All right, Anthea. Yes. Uh, any questions on any of that stuff? So far? No, no, not right now. I do oh, have cool. a question on the break retest, but that is for in a minute. So, yeah. Well, that's good because the next one I was going to go is say, hey, let's do <laughs> the break and retest. Uh, this one is, is super, super awesome. So here we go. If we look for the same thing, uh, I will always put my break and retest right. Where is the close of the structure bits? Hey, cool. We've got it here. We've got it there. So I've, I've now got it in place where I want it to be um there we go let's move it it's going to look pretty ugly because it's going to jolt itself up so let's move it down somewhere and get rid of all this crap when in doubt clear your chart mate you can just draw a new line and keep coming down <laughs> there we go so let's say we we're looking for a break around this spot uh i will go add long break and retest um and so my distance to break is just kind of visualize it. Let's see, put a 1% in there. looks pretty good. You, uh, didn't, but now all I really care about is did I get price on the other side of alpha? Did I get it above it so I can look for a bounce? Like a break and retest is effectively, you got a, can, a candle close cross followed by a bounce. Uh, and so now oh, it's, if, if price was to come up here and get above there for a break and I've got my close above alpha because I know that no matter how you've got this going, even though you've got a candle close here, if I get rid of the candle close on my break and retest, the, the break still must be a close. So if you just get a giant wick up to the break and then it comes back down, uh, Vema says that's not a break. It had to have a close. It, it must be a candle close on the break just for the break but then from there well cool what am i going to do and now it's a regular bounce so i'm looking for a 0.1 uh, and then what i tend to do is go a distance to confirm of the same amount as my break uh, and so now that means i know that i've got price coming up i've had it come back down to my alpha with my 0.1 close enough is good enough and then i've had price go back up to that uh, that break percent. That gives me a pretty good indication of awesome. Th this has bounced. This has retested. Uh, and so then the same thing happens here. I will come along and I'll go at my stop loss. I know that for me, it has had that confirmed change in direction. And so I can put my stop loss ridiculously close. Like if it comes back down at this point, if it goes up, down, up, down now, I'm wrong. I want to get out of there really quick. Um, I also love the invalidation here. I, if I'm using break and retest, I am using invalidate of half a percent. Like it has to hit that line uh, and it's going to bounce off it perfectly. The break and retest that you see when you get them right and they're just spot on to the dollar, it is scary how closely accurate that stuff can get. Uh, no matter if it's like a downtrend for five weeks or 23 months, it's still perfectly on the dollar. Um, yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's nuts. And that's why whenever I am also using the, um, the, the drawing trend lines, I know some people just kind of go, oh, yeah, cool. There we go. That looks pretty good. Um, me, personally, I am always holding the control key when I put some of these in place and I'm going to put it on that exact spot. I want it to be triggered off the close, off the wick, off the whatever. Uh, and then I will go ahead and find the other point and just put it on top of somewhere else. And then I'll just see where does it line up with. And if it's got a bunch of little touches along the way, I go, oh, cool. That's a perfect opportunity for me to do stuff. Um, yeah, Bitcoin, all the cryptos are most definitely, in my opinion, massively controlled by bots, by algorithms. Uh, and those things are math to the to the point zero 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 decimal place um, that I'm I'm going to hold control and have it always perfectly in place. Anyway, that's me. That's me ranting about how I personally use these strategies. Uh, when I'm doing that, it gets me a pretty good risk to reward, and the, I focus on the 
where's my take profit going to be? Always where's my exit point? And if I know where my exit point is and I believe that price can move that far, how close can I get my stop loss before I think it's too close? Like I'm, when I'm doing a break and retest, I'm never going to put my stop loss on the wrong side of alpha. Like that, that's just, that's silly. That's not going to work. It's got to be down there. Um, and we can see a good example of that one, actually. Real money trade. I had a CRO trade in here. This one. Go. Stop loss on this one wasn't too far on the other side over here. And it's touched, perfect touch, perfect touch. Just came shy, just came shy, just came shy. All right, cool. I know if it, if that support doesn't hold, I'm out. I don't care. I'm out. I don't want to see it wiggle to the other side and then go back up. No. So that gives me, I can put my stop loss really close against these things. Um, you've probably seen on Facebook, some of Morde's trades. Uh, he's got like 30 to ones, 26s to ones, 38 to 1%. He's just insane. Some of the results that he gets. Uh, but how does he do it? He says, I'm going to put my stop loss as absolutely close as I can to my trigger. And the closer it is, I know my take profits up there, the closer my stop loss is, the bigger that risk reward gets because the ratio is all that he cares about. Um, so he's an interesting guy to look at some of his trades whenever he posts them publicly. Um, something on that when I was trading with him is he's happy to get stopped out three or four times on an entry because of that high risk to reward ratio. So his, his stop loss is really close and the price will come down and may wick back up and stop him out. But he's like, no, I know I'm, I'm likely right. So he just throws the trade back on there with that same risk to reward ratio. And rather than like we're comparing the chart between his entry and my entry, I had like a five to one and he had a 20 to one. He got stopped out three times getting that 21 and he ended up winning 16% account change and I ended up winning like 5% account change. Yeah, so yeah. if you're uh, persistent with it, it, it does pay off, but um, I'm really risk adverse, so I couldn't do it. I saw a great quote the other day that was, as a trader, you are basically a professional loser. Uh, yeah, pretty much. You lose a lot and then you get these massive ass wins that make you really happy. And then you realize, oh, I can do it. I'm all right at this. <laughs> all right, Anthea. So there is a quick run through of how I personally get my risk to reward increases. Um, get that stop loss yeah. tighter. But that that's me. And that is, hey, as Ryan says, it's not everyone's cup of tea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think because, you know, you are, you are taught when you are entering the market that you don't have these stop these fail safes in place that you do with FEMA. So you can manipulate this because it has to follow certain rules before it will even let you. And it's those types of things that, yeah, this is going to change the game definitely for me anyway, um, knowing that I can play with those a little bit more, still follow, you know, the technical analysis I've been taught, but then know what you can do and then tweak that a little bit bit more too so yeah yeah very interesting um yeah <laughs> um, oh, cool um uh, hey richard Cody. yo go as um so i asked the other day about the separate sub account so if you want to do some experimenting and have have your have your have your account set up so that you can do your long-term trades and then you can analyze everything in in some nice proper detail and then have your other account still linked to the, the same exchange as a sub account um, not affecting those results so you can analyze scalps and then you can analyze your, your long terms um, yeah really looking forward to be able to separate that that data but um on the back off the back of that just a, a probably a double-edged question here multiple take profits man like that would be that would be a big one, like being able to get that take profit one hit and then move your stop up into break even. Like, I'm sure you guys, I know it's 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 in the it's in the works somewhere, but yeah, that that stuff would be a game changer. Official product roadmap on this one. So our goal, our one of our goals for this quarter, which is rapidly ending, uh, is to have all of this stuff here out uh, and released. Uh, so 
Integration with OKX Exchange uh, should be coming on Thursday. Hooray, break and retest strategy is now out. Um, so the ability to have the auto stop loss take profit on the chart. So we knew to get to the staggered entries and exits option, we knew that we needed to have the drawings be draggable because typing in that many figures sucks. Uh, and so then, cool. Well, we also know that we're going to be able to need to move all of these things around a lot. And so edit existing trade plans will be next. Uh, once that is done, great. We've, we've done all the groundwork to get us to staggered entries and exits. So that is most definitely uh, on, on our, we're not moving our roadmap, even though it's coming to the end of Ju uh, June, we're probably gonna have to move this one over to July. Uh, it is absolutely still gonna be there. Um, yes, 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 yes. And we're just as excited about it. In fact, I think Reese even commented in his um, latest market scan. I am so excited for uh, for the second entries and exits himself. Um, what, was, what was your what was your trade last week, Reese? Tell us about that one. How it just like moved, and you didn't know where to put your stop loss for a second to move it down. No, that, that was brutal. So that was um, let me bring it up. Just, market was reviewed. I've just finished recording today's today's one where I spoke about it. so let me just bring it up and I'll share my screen this hurt me very badly very I woke up so mad at myself so what happened was we got the short so this was a short bounce from alpha so we're looking at price coming up here coming down and our take profit was down here we got the rejection. We got a really, really nice rejection. So that was awesome. And then when we got that rejection, I moved my stop just a little bit lower because I just, it was up here. So I was like, right, at least this way, if it does come back up, I get stopped out. I've lost about a sixth of what I was prepared to lose in the first place. So that's, that's always good. I was pretty happy with that. The worst part about this was I was watching this candle uh, and we were actually in a meeting at the time. It was Tuesday night. And I was going, all right, when this candle closes, because I like to do things on candle closes, when this candle closes, I'm dragging my stop down to here. I'm just going to lock in that profit. And if it continues to my take profit, awesome. I get my four to one. If it heads back up, I get my 2.5 to one. I don't want to risk all of this profit, everything there. I don't want to risk that. So I move my stop loss down and then I'll just let things, you know, play out as they will. Anyway, we get out of the meeting. I had a few jobs to do. So I went and did those jobs. Completely forgot that I was waiting on the 10 o'clock candle close. And so it came and went and I didn't move my stop loss. And I woke up in the morning and I was like, ah, oh, price was basic, my take profit. I'm sure it's continued down. You yeah, know, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'll take a profit. It'll be all good. I've got my nice four to one and I woke up and I've been stopped out for that loss. So I was really annoyed at myself. Um, and that's, that's why I'm such a big fan of staggered exits, right? Because these are probably where I would have taken profit along the way. And so I would have loved to have locked in some of that profit as we came down. And then that loss would have hurt. I mean, one, it wouldn't have been a loss even if I hadn't moved my stop loss because I would have taken a fair bit of profit along here. And two, it would have just felt a lot better having locked in some gains um, than not. So yeah, that was uh, not a fun one, but we did get another win this week. So can't complain too much. I remember after that meeting on Wednesday, Reese posting into our internal comms channel um, about I really, can we please hurry up with staggered entries and exits, please? Because I just would have had a lovely win and now I've had a loss. <laughs> and it was that exact trade. So we hear you as, we definitely want it in there ourselves. Absolutely. Um, you had another question there, which is about uh, analyzing on sub accounts. So yeah, you can have multiple sub accounts linked up to Vema. Um, the same thing for a... Um, OKX as well, coming Thursday. Woo. Um, you, on the side of those, if you go into any of your trades, let me share my screen. You can add, uh, let's pick on something randomly. You can always add in uh, tags after your trade is finished uh, at, at any single point. So you don't have to put them in at the start. Um, like I love Reese's idea of putting in bad habits, oh, bad habit counter trend trading. You do that, that's now there. So you could, until we build it into the analyze screen, which yes, we're going to do. Mike's uh, also had a bit of a rant on that one. Um, put in here sub account and then whatever the sub account name is, account one. Um, and if you wanted help to automate all of that stuff there, if you've got like a bunch of trades that you know, oh crap, man, Richard, that sounds good, but there's like 30 trades that have got to go through there. Uh, just send a message over to support at Vema Trader. Um, I'm happy to write a script that goes ahead and looks at here and what was the account name that was used on that. And then I'll just automatically tag them for you. 
Question with tagging. Um, that, that sounds, oh, sorry. No, you go. You, you finish your question. That definitely makes sense. But if you go back to your dashboard, how, so you, you, this is the thing I'm talking about. There's the overall sum, right? So that's- Oh, you mean this part here? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, separate, separating those overall results between, uh, say, a scalping account and, an, and your overall day trading swing account. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Good point. Because this one here, uh, it is purely just against all of your trades. Uh, exactly. I think we built all this part here in place before we launched. And at the time before we launched, it was just BitMEX. Uh, we were working on a different exchange. We then removed leverage. Thank you, Binance. Um, and then we switched over to adding FTX and we never actually considered, hey, crap, we should go back and fix that over here. Like this technically includes paper trades as well. So, yep, yep. I hear you on that one. Um, and uh, that is something that I think we will not think. Yes, we will address that. I don't have a timeline for you, but uh, I'm sure that will come up at our next strategy event, which is in July. Uh, hey, Josh, what do you reckon? Any timelines on that you reckon, mate? On the spot uh, call out? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for like, uh, yeah, probably July, August. It's going to definitely be in the next two, three months. And also like the ability to filter by paper or life across your whole entire account is another thing we've been talking about. I see it all tying up into that sort of ID where you can filter by account um, sub accounts or by paper or live um, trading. So yeah, definitely in the next two months. And Mike is one of our developers is uh, pushing it. I'm pushing it. So I'm sure it'll be there. The, the, good thing was, <laughs> the good thing was is when Mike has an issue, he's the one who solves all the issues. So if it's bugging him, it usually gets done a lot quicker than expected. <laughs> you know, people are like, right, I'm sick of this. I'm fixing it now. So um, yeah. yeah. Uh, that sounds good. Nice work, James. Loving it. Good to hear, man. Good to hear. Um, if in the meantime, uh, you're like th sitting there thinking two months, oh my God, I don't want to wait that long. Again, just email support at Bemetrader. We're happy to get the data out and I'm happy to help you analyze it as well, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. So say, for example, if I just, because I'm still on FTX, dragging my heels, kicking and screaming, not wanting to make the jump to OKX. Yeah. But um, if I set up a, another account in OK, OKX just to have a play with, would I then be able to separate it out like that? So it's not in the same exchange? Would it be this, would it be the same issue? So you'll have, uh, if you set up FT, uh, an OKX account, and then you add in another API key, so now you've got your FTX and your OKX accounts and the one Vemma account, you are still going to be facing the same thing. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. You would you would be able to do that in the analyze screen though, because you can analyze by exchange. So you could literally just search OKX as the exchange. And then it would only show OKX trades. And that was something I was thinking with, um, well, interesting, the temporary BitMEX. But um, when you were saying before was about wanting to separate your scalping and your swing trades, I think you said, what you could do there is search by, tag by interval. So if you go, you know, say all your scalping is on the five minute, um, then you should be able to use that interval to just get you those trades. And same with, you know, say your, your swing trading was on the daily um, you should be able to select the daily interval to get the data for those trades. So not a perfect solution, but might help you sort of get some of that data. Yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah. I'll give that a go. Thanks, man. So with the tagging, um, obviously, as I, I wanted to go in and, and tag all the terminated risk rewards that had occurred throughout my trading, um, but because they haven't technically been applied the tag isn't working. So how, is there a way of, you know, for those that haven't actually entered into a trade to be able to go back and go, okay, well, this is how I, you know, this is my risk to reward terminated. These are the ones that I need to adjust later on. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. And Della, one of our devs is going to love this because he reckons we're cursed. He thinks that yeah. As soon as, we, <laughs> as soon as we bring up we an issue, we talked about this this exact morning. Yeah, we talked about this this morning, right? Okay. Think as soon as we bring up an issue that we haven't really seen users bring up before, users start finding it all the time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we literally discussed this one this morning. So currently, the analyze section only works with trades that did enter. So okay. if you filter by that tag, it's not going to show because none of those trades would have entered. Um, and that is something that okay. we will 
did we put that in for this sprint summer or are we looking at moving it to next week? Uh, next uh, sprint. Yeah, we'll probably do it next sprint. And what sprint is, is just in, in the next two weeks. So starting, yeah, the first week of July, we'll be working on that sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay. I did mention a few months ago, so this isn't the first time it came up. No, nah, it has it has been nah, brought up before, yeah. but we literally spoke about it this morning and I said, look, I think it's come up twice. And for me, I was like, right, I really want to see it, but you know, there's a few other things we're prioritizing at the moment, so we decided to put it off. And then sure enough, now it's coming up. So yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants it. So that is no problem. I'm part and of is any question on that? Is everyone like just re react on Zoom if you're facing that problem as well. What Antia was mentioning. Just do a little celebrate emoji, emoji or something. Um, cool. Okay. And there was a situation that, um, well, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Um, was, is fine. Yeah. Was, was, right. okay. I, um, either result. Yeah. I've been called for a second, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> um, how about the staggered entries and exits is that something that everyone's looking into or interested into yeah react if you yeah pretty certain that would be most of us okay cool and um the sub account trading just out of curiosity so when um was was mentioning before he wanted to filter by sub accounts and view the data across Vema in the sub account as a sub like at a data level, the sub account of the paper trading level, et cetera, et cetera. Cool. On the dashboard? Okay. Yeah, on the dashboard and the analyze screen. Yeah, I think you should be able to like exclude like paper trades and like be a lot finer on the dashboard, definitely. Cool. Yeah, cool. It was Matthew Forrester had an awesome idea uh, for the dashboard I really liked as well, which was um, on the dashboard, say what the best trade was in you've had in the past and say what tags are on there. Uh, or do auto analysis and tell you, hey, cool, here's some of the interesting tags you've already got up there. Have you, did you know that you best trade on the four hour? Um, did you know that you put most of your trades on the one hour and keep losing, but you do better on the 15 minutes? Um, I think that'd be really, really cool. Like things to just shove it in your face that the, we can auto analyze your data for you. How good is that? I, think, I love that idea. You need that ninja. You need that ninja. Um, so we can... So we can do aggregate level analytics over the top of what everyone in Vemra is using. Uh, and we can absolutely say with massive certainty that the people who are winning the most on Vemra and have the consistent PL uh, wins every single week is they are using tags and they are using journaling. Uh, they've got a number of analysis cards that they're using. Uh, we can see the people who are not journaling and are just going nuts and, and putting on a bunch of trades and not writing anything in there, aren't using the analyze screen. We can see them pretty consistently losing three to four percent a week um which is unfortunate uh and so yeah okay use use the journaling use the journaling and use the tags put some thought in there if you want another zoom session to talk about those and different strategies we're very happy to do that as well um but yeah if you want to be a good profitable trader journal 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 tag analyze spend the time doing it make sure you think it? about the trade Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Makes you justify to yourself. Why am I seeing what I'm going to do? It's like, if you can verbalize it or I guess it communicate it effectively, then you can, you feel better about it or you'll talk yourself out of it. I mean, yeah, there was one so trade right. where I just had one. I was like, it looks good visually. <laughs> when you start and you typing like FOMO or something, you know, it's time to just get <laughs> into that setup. The EMA was really low, but... <laughs> <laughs> and anyone had success stories with uh tags and the use of that feature um exactly training? exactly what i just talked about the four hour versus the one hour yep. i found i found that my um four hour i was getting pnl of like one percent in my one hour i was getting like 17 percent um, awesome it showed me very quickly that i should no longer enter on the four hour <laughs> awesome that's really good yeah, my work, my strategies, um, just having a look at the difference between a four hour strategy and a one hour strategy. Um, when I was doing some mentoring, um, I went in thinking like, all I'm doing is losing, blah, 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 blah. She said, pull it up. And she she hadn't <laughs> seen Vemma before. And when I pulled it up, I had a 100% RSI four hour um, strategy. Wow. 
Um, so yeah, and I just went, well, okay, I don't have a problem then. Like it was just because I felt like I'd been seeing losses. But when I looked at my one hour um, EMA strategy, I noticed that that was where I was making my losses. So she said, well, what are you doing? Just, you know, <laughs> go back to your four hours and, and work on that. And that's what I've been doing. And it's been really, really successful. So that's awesome. I yeah. That's how he's my tags anyway. Really yeah. good. Well, Richard just was thinking exactly what I was thinking. And I was going to pull that up. Fair minds think alike. But I think Matt Zoff's recent one on this court has really, a really powerful way of using custom tags to show, um, to really outline how powerful tags can be. So, yeah, morning trading and evening trading. And you found that um, how powerful it is to, well, how good morning trading is to him and how he should get more sleep. <laughs> I've been waiting for the um, automatic tagging of morning and evening. Um, I think there was a time zone issue, but has that now been fixed so you can automatically tag that now? So we send all of our data from our back end uh, to from the website to our back end in UTC time. Um, so one of the things we wanted to do for that was come into the settings area in your my account and put some uh, some general settings in here. Like you know how we can set. I want a minimum risk to reward of five and I want my base exchange to be uh, FTX. You've got to get in touch with support for that currently. Uh, we want to bring it up here and have like a my settings area uh, that would then have what is my time zone. And until we know what your time zone is, um, we don't really want to assume it and then just say, hey, according to this 8 a.m. UTC time, ew, what the heck does that mean? Where am I? Um, yeah, so that's what's... Pre preventing wrong word stopping no delaying us from adding that in there for you i'm so keen for that because i want to see that but i'm really lazy with those sorts of tags i think <laughs> i think about what i'm looking at not the time of day it is yeah that's fair enough i mean the good thing about that is once we know the time zone uh of where people are this will just go and oh cool we can automatically make this backdate itself to all your existing trades not having to do a kind of don't forget ryan to go back and retag all your stuff for the past three months that's one other, so one of the other things that's going to go in that same section is uh something that summer is working on at the moment which is essentially a false journal so it's what we were talking about before yes um you know we are finding that most of our profitable traders are journaling heavily and so we want to have a user default setting, you know, that you can turn off if you, if you don't want to, but it won't let you create a trade setup without filling out the sections of your journal. Uh, so that'll go in that same section, which is something I'm really excited about. Should have a random minimum character. So then people can't be like, oh, I just put in three characters and it makes it happy. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> uh, boom. Just checking the chat there for a second. Christian says, Hey, what's the Discord link? I'm just going to send that straight into the chat for you now. Christian, there you go. Join a Discord. Say hi. Love to see. Have you there? Ba, 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 ba. Hey, Anthea, we have gone on loads and loads and loads of tangents for this original call purpose. Um, that is all right. <laughs> have, uh, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Do you want to show us some of yours? We can have a look at them. Um, open for you how you want to approach here. Um, well, yeah, I can up. show you the yeah I can show you the one that I was talking about anyway if that's what you want and um, see if we can maybe see if there's anything that I could potentially do better and then yeah. Um, earlier, Dwayne Martin says, uh, well, this is way back when we were talking about the, uh, the risk reward stuff. Basically, you want to increase your risk reward for each trade you set up while leaving your minimum at a 2.5 to 1. If your minimum RR is set to 2.5, you really want to set up trades that are at least a 3 to 1 to give you more room for entry, especially if using candle close. Yeah, that makes sense. We were talking about that one with the, uh, the wiggle room of the entry. Hmm. Okay. So. While Anthea is setting up, I might ask quickly. Uh, no. <clears throat> Bybit, I, Donnie mentioned something briefly that you guys might be looking at integrating that at some point. Is yeah, absolutely. So the FTX thing sucked. Uh, we got caught with our pants down. They made a decision. We weren't prepared for another exchange. Uh, this took us six to eight weeks to get OKX done. We don't want to be caught in that position again, where if uh, OKX was to say, guess what, Australia, we're limiting your leverage too, because the Australian government says no. Um, we'll be sitting here basically, oh dear, this sucks for us completely. Um, so I expect that after we do OKX, we'll probably put a dev immediately onto another exchange. Awesome. 
and I'll ask another one later, but I'll let Anthea go for now. There <laughs> Sorry, you go. Anthea. Uh, so you're probably going to want a time frame on that one. You're probably looking to do another six to six to eight weeks for that as well. Ah, okay. So I guess I'll have to give all cakes a go then. <laughs> the good news is though, Vema is exactly the same no matter what exchange you're on. It doesn't matter. Yeah. That's one thing I'm super proud of. Back to Anthea. Okay, back to me. <laughs> all right. So um, so this is the one I took the other day. Um, it was FTT, saw this um, ascent, descending broadening wedge, obviously, um, so continuation, hit the 618 and I entered off the so as it was playing out, I saw on the, the one hour that it was breaking. I was in the middle of actually setting this up. So I was going to do a break retest. Um, but I got in on this. So I started to create it there. Is that where I created it? How did yep. I do that? Um, maybe. No, that's the one. That's the, that's, it's yeah. got the, the vertical uh, line. So yeah. this is when you created it. So it must have been right up the top when I created it then. Because I ended up choosing a bounce. So that's why I'm confused. So it must have been right at the top of that wick when I when I entered because I wanted it to bounce and then retest because I was going to take it as a as exactly that. So break, retest and continue up. So and it entered, I think from memory, it shortened it to here, which was a 1.19, whereas a my alpha line was was back here, which I don't know why. It's a few things that I'm just like seeing now. I'm like, oh, okay. So anyway, long story short, I wanted, yeah, all I wanted to see was to break, retest and, and continue up. But because I had chosen the bounce that obviously bounced, candle closed. So I've got, um, yeah, activate was zero, 1.5 to one. and it's it entered well yeah it was meant to have entered on one of these here and then obviously I didn't get my trade so things that I know that we spoke about was obviously smaller smaller stop loss um which would have helped as well now knowing what I've wanted to do obviously not candle close so just you know the the um distance to to confirm is something I'll look at again so that that way you know it's not as bad and then yeah continue up so that's yeah so that's what I was looking at and what happened um yeah because I saw yes yeah, there's RS so bounce off the RSI and that's what I was looking for so um yeah <laughs> so what are we looking at that they were looking at that where's your there's your alpha I'm looking at this one going hang on that should have done something can you switch over to your journal for a second and I won't judge if you haven't got a journal entry in here look at my journal Cool. Right. I'm looking for the the second one. Cancel trade plan RR below minimum. Six. Can you find that time on the chart? Twelve six twelve, please. So there. There. So that means that would have been there. But you created it. That would have. Oh no! I see what's happened. Okay. Cool. So I got confused with the hang on that thing should have taken action. No, 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 it shouldn't have based off that. Um, awesome. And then if you switch back to details for a second and then scroll down just a little bit to your risk details area to show us where the take profit and stop loss was. There we go. So stop loss was a three, six or 26. Yeah, okay. Oh, so you had your stop loss like way down yeah. like, under yeah. structure. And that's because, yeah, obviously, you know, because I'm very risk averse. <laughs> yeah, so, no, I get I get you. I get you. you. Know, previous structure, blah, blah, blah. But now that I know that, yeah, with these other rules, um, like I said, you know, uh, on a on a trading, you know, if you're just entering into an exchange, you'd need that type of stop loss entering in here. You don't really, you can obviously allow the you know, allow them to take care of that for you, that it won't enter you in if it's going to. So that, like I said, I, it's just those little tweaks. And it's like, oh, if I, I didn't, you don't think of that. You just go back to your, you know, your learning and, and what you do on an exchange rather than the fact that you are putting in all these other rules that you forget that you're actually putting in because you're just following a trade plan. So yeah, yeah no, I get you. going to change. Like that's what I mean, straight up, it's going to change everything. So, yeah. So when I look at what you've got there on this one, 
Um, I can see, yeah, okay, cool. I wanted to, you wanted to put your stop loss underneath those pieces over there. Uh, I will clear and draw them again here and here. Um, I would look at this one slightly differently, which is, yeah, cool. You've got the broadening wedge, which is absolutely happening. There's the top side. If you draw straight along here, which is kind of where you had your alpha line. You've, I know, I know my line's not straight. Sorry about that. Um, but that to me says I've had the break of the wedge and I've had the retest at this point. Um, so that to me would be, well, cool. There's my structure. I'll move my stop loss up here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Because if yeah. it's going to go back into the wedge, yeah. it's gotten out of the wedge. You know, if it's going to go back into the wedge, it's going to go straight back in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what I saw afterwards. I went, well, that was a little bit overkill. But yeah, I was using, you know, like the my you know, the old RSI. Oh, sorry, the RSI. Like, um fibs, so that's my fibs line too. So yeah. Like, okay, let's, you know, hit the fibs, got it below, you know, 618, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, it's just these little things, you know, that I'm co-creating which is going to change as well. So yep. yeah, yeah. Hmm. Nice. So yeah, that one makes sense now to how to fix that one. Um, be a great break and retest too. I know. Be like, <laughs> boom. I know, right? <laughs> I was like, I should have just wait a little bit longer, but I was trying to get in. Um, so where was the other one that was kind of... Uh, oh, I love all that green. A little bit of green. This is my third one. This one, maybe. No. Sorry, I did tag them all, but you're all right. I didn't realize it didn't work. What is that DYDX one? That's got a fat ass green thing going on and a very tiny stop. My 18 to 1. Oh, no, that one. Yeah. <laughs> just that one. <laughs> you know, no big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know, full bragging rights for that one. Um, that one was a really, really tight stop, too, which wasn't meant to be as tight as it was. But now I'm looking at it, I was like, well, it should have actually probably been that tight. Um, oh, where is it? That's where just while you're finding right. that, that's where the leverage part really comes in. If you can have higher leverage, you can get your stop loss tighter. Mm. Bring on OKX. Okay, OKX. Okay, so is it Thursday yet? No. I've, right. I've, oh, nearly, I I've nearly made my minimum trading volume to get higher leverage on uh, FTX. <laughs> I'm trying to beat you. <laughs> you got less than two days, boy. <laughs> no, You'll I win. can't find it right now. It's okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to start to play around with that a little bit and see what I can conjure up with the, the new change to, to stop loss. And and what Ryan said, I, I actually was looking at doing the, the smaller time frame too. So, you know, for those, for the crosses and stuff like that, so that you do get a better and a potential better entry anyway, yeah, rather cool. than, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's it. So I've got a, uh, just picking something around randomly here. I found a, an interesting one from IOTA. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna share it and uh, thinking out loud here, I can either show you how I would approach this or tell us how you would approach it. Speaking to you specifically, Anthea. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So IOTA. So if you had uh, this lovely IOTA thing here, and we had this lovely trend, alpha trend here, uh, I can see either a short or a break and retest. Um, there is no right answer, by the way. Sorry. So uh, if I'm looking, if you're looking at IOTA, seeing this big, lovely okay. downtrend here that's going on, it's going down. Awesome. We've just seen this part here. It's yep. bounced off this bottom part right now. Oh, good. We've got a support. We can either take a, uh, a, a, a downwards something there. We could take a short off alpha or we could go for a, let's go a break and retest off alpha. Okay. Um, yep. but the idea yep. is we want to keep that stop loss. We want to get, get a pretty good risk for reward on it. Um, so I was wondering, putting you on the spot entirely, um, yeah. if we, if you were looking at this one and plotting it out, 
How do you think you would go attacking this one so that we can get a pretty good risk reward out of it? All right. Well, for a short, um, I'd like to obviously see like a break and retest um, below below that that current support. So, so this one. Um, yep. Yeah. Oops. Cancel. Let's put in for the sake of argument. Let's just go there. Yep. Yeah. Um, so on that one, you said take a short break and retest. Yep. Okay. Um, as for, I want to see it, that little bit of a wick, I want to see clear that, um, then retest at least. Um, uh, so yeah, the distance. So for that, like, so, I mean, back in my old stuff, I'd be looking at it to clear previous structure for a stop so your stop would like beforehand would be um kind of like above where where it's currently retracing yeah about there but yeah so that's where i would have had it um yep. take profit obviously Which is absolutely fair enough hey cool there's the there's the structure area yeah um Whereas obviously take profit would be just at previous market structure, which you can't see right now. Um, Where would that be? Let's go daily, go right back. Man, you ain't got no structure back yeah, here. I was going to say, <laughs> I did one then. <laughs> um, Basically, I just want to see it crash and burn. All the yeah. way to <laughs> Let's just take the whole market down, shall we? <laughs> um, and I will now stop moving the chart. Cool. <laughs> So, okay, so that's how you would have done things by putting that up way up there. But then that's uh -huh. going to give you, even with a, a take profit of way down here of a 25% move, the only thing we really care about is a is the risk reward. Yeah. So now you'd be saying, awesome, if I get the entry, it comes up here uh, and then it comes back down. If you're looking for a break and retest, it's yeah. retested or it hasn't. Yeah, so now knowing that, Obviously, for you, you know, you could definitely make it tighter because you could also include your invalidate as well. So beforehand, you had your distance to invalidate at it was only a small amount, wasn't it? Really? Would you do it as a small amount or a um or a big one? So yeah, like, like uh, a little like, like yeah, not big, big, but you know, just yeah. just enough to. Like, and that to me would act as your your stop loss as such. So, yep. so that's um, fair enough. I, I get what you're going for there. Like, because what I was saying earlier was, uh, if I had this one, I've gone, all right, cool. It's looking at there a five percent rate. Right? Let's just yeah. pretend that four percent is okay for the sake yeah. of the argument. Cool, we've got that. I'm going to set my distance to activate zero point one. Close mm -hmm. enough is good enough. Yeah. Um, but visually on this part here. Uh, I can see this has got a lot of wiki stuff going on. So I'd probably put my invalidate of probably about 2%. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It, I don't care what the number is. I care visually how far away it is. And it gets me past ish those wicks. If I see it come right up here and I've got a wick to the outside, eh, it's done, I reckon. Yeah. So that way, could you technically put your distance to invalidate and your stop loss at the same percentage? Yeah, absolutely. So the invalidate is only is only there from a break to entry. Like the 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 life cycle of a trade is price is above Bravo, we break Bravo, we've gone far enough before, past it. Now invalidation comes into play. So either it's going to hit here and bounce, and I'm going to get the entry, or uh -huh. it's going to come down. It's going to break it, and then it's going to get invalidated. As soon as you get your entry, like on this one here, we've got our entry. Invalidation doesn't exist anymore. Invalidation is should I take Sorry. the entry or not? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So with those ones, yeah, that, that's that's. So if that's where your stop loss was, you were thinking you would put it before. Uh, mm -hmm. Not financial advice. Where would you put it now? Um, at least where my invalidation would be. So from like at the 2% from like just underneath those. Yeah, so where the wicks are. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, sick right there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Cool, cool. So that one there got you from a 2.6 to 1 just by moving your stop loss down a little bit more. Oh, cool. You've gone to a 7 to 1. Thank you. 
And you yeah. a big smile on that. <laughs> <laughs> I could deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it's, I remember I listened to Donnie and Donnie was saying, man, it's either going to go with me or it's going to go against me. My entry was either correct or it was wrong. Uh, and now I've taken that to mean it's going to bounce and I've got my confirm. So I'm going to go with it and I'm going to move my stop loss tighter. He may have mean keep it on the other side of trend line. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I interpret that as it's going to go good or I want to get out quick. Yeah. 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 So, and then as Ryan was saying, I mean, if you, I mean, how many times can you then do that before, you know, you start? So for personally, my, um, for my trading, you know, I want to get at least five two to one trades per month. And now this is just making it so much easier knowing this tiny, like that, that just an easy thing like that. Um, so, you know, how many times can you then try to re-enter without taking a massive loss? You know, if, if you do get whipped out, say if they do have a bit of a stop hunt or whatever it might be, then you can always enter back in if you know that that's what is going to generally occur and then get your trade. So, yeah, yeah that's really cool. Mm. It's like you are looking to a 7.7 .7 to 1. If you lose 1% and you then got the second entry because you mm -hmm. were super confident about it, uh, you're still up 6% after that. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, that's, yeah, it's a numbers game really, isn't it? Rather than a, yeah, like a, a trade game. It's a, you know, let's use this to your advantage. It's so cool. Like, yeah, this is, this is actually blowing my mind right now. I'm kind of like, what? <laughs> uh, I, I really love what, uh, what I believe it was Reese who, who really smashed the idea into my head um, of take emotion out of it. Don't oh, be yeah. emotionally attached to it whatsoever. It either works or it doesn't. Um, yeah. you, you make money, you, you win big or you lose a little. That's, that's what you care about. Mm, hey, a yeah. small thing, small thing while you're on that screen. I've noticed Yo. once you've placed your... You've done your thing and you've you know you've added it and it's good to go um if you place a lot of trades you might forget where you put those things and the little visualization thing is so handy to know but that's gone yeah so absolutely arrow, i know what you mean awesome that, that stayed there just so you go oh sanity check i remember why i did that so here's a great example of that one. Uh, I've got three Ethereum ones that I set up all in the 15 minute at the same time. None of them entered, cool. But if I go and look at this one, break and retest, I think I've got three trigger lines on here. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, which one is this one for? <laughs> is this the cross down? You've got to kind of look at it. It was Charlie, break and retest. Okay, so that was this one here. Yeah, absolutely, man. I was speaking to, um, uh, we'll see if the guy who coded this part here in saying, look, dude, that piece we add in, the visualizer for break and retest, it's awesome. Uh, we should keep that going. What should now be showing, assuming this trade didn't expire like I've got over here, uh, is that this should now be showing uh, break and retest over there. Like it should be updating itself to say, if it was to continue with where it is now, we know the math, we can show it from where it is now, as opposed to having that drawing back there at the start where we did it. Yeah, that would be good, man. I think I think a really cool way to do that would be if you go, uh, where's my mouse? So similar to what we have the eye for the creation date, you can do the same with the visualizer. So you can turn it on and off. So if you didn't want to see it in monitoring, you could just click the eye and it'd be hidden. And if you wanted to see it, it could, it, uh, Bring it back. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Uh, a good one, because I had the same problem with the trend lines. A really good one for that is if you right click trend line. Or any, any trend line? Yeah, anything. You, uh, actually, you can't do it on a trend line now. So if you right click, no, you can do it on a trend line as long as it's not the one not that in the setup. One. Yeah, yeah, so then you go object tree. And then you can see Bravo and Alpha. Uh, Bravo and Alpha. So you can delete them. But this is set up on Charlie. You won't be able to delete Charlie. You can't even see Charlie. I think if you click them as shapes, I don't think they'll even be there. So that way you know exactly no, which setup you've done it on. Yeah, so that's how I do it because I often have a lot of trend lines on a, on a setup. If this one here has got a, a drawback to it instead of hiding it. Reese's one is better because the drawings still stay. Uh, with me having all these setups on there, I mean, knowing what they were at the time, if I press the delete button, everything disappears except Charlie. Uh, and the the original and the Vema drawings. Because this one is tied to Charlie, we cannot delete Charlie off the chart. So now you've got, oh, cool, super clean chart. And if we had super clean chart with break and retest visualizer still being there as well, oh, that would that would massively be cleaner than that. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you'd be looking for, uh, Waz? Absolutely, man. 
Nice. We shall get Wasif onto it. Sick. Um, all right, Anthea, I got one more for you, which is looking at this lovely downtrend. So it doesn't look so steep. I'm going to zoom in. Um, I'm going to switch this one over to alpha and I'm going to go long for a break and read just on alpha. So all the other examples we've been talking about so far were kind of flat. Um, break and retest on a trend. Oh, I love this. Let's go long and set strategy break and retest. Um, and then we'll go distance to break of one. And, oh no, this one's going to need to be something like five to make sure it looks like it goes up. Uh, distance to activate still 0.1. My distance to confirm is let's go three because I've now got a bounce off that. Um, what I'll do is I'll move my take profit somewhere interesting, but because I'm going to ignore that green line because it's so steep, uh, it's making it 30 candles in the distance before it draws that. Um, we're looking for something like this to happen, like the break and retest. Um, I don't want to have to keep on moving my stop loss where, whereas it's moving around the place as the trade's moving. Uh, so with that, I can come to risk management and I can set my stop loss strategy to other side of trend line. And I'll go 0.5. Five. Um, now I know that I have got a distance to confirm of three and I'm real time monitoring. So as soon as I've gone 3% above my alpha, I'm going to take the entry and I've got a half a percent for my stop loss on the other side. That gives me a three and a half percent total stop loss. Um, so that gives me a pretty good idea of where things are going to be as well. And so now why I love doing that one on downtrends is because if we check that out, if it was to take the entry just where we've drawn it here with the take profit up there and our, our entry is going to be half a percent. Oh, I'm going to have to zoom in for this and then go one, two, three and a half percent. Close enough is good enough for right now. Um, great. We've got a 10.35 to one. But as time goes on, our take profit is fixed. Our take profit is absolutely staying in the same position. I can move my entry down here now. And even though I've got the same target up there, put it 3% above it, I've now gone to a 13 to, to one. Uh, so a 10 to a 13. So as time moves on, I'm going to get a better entry even more if I was to keep my take profit as a fixed value. Mm hmm I really, really like that one as well, because then if you go, um, if you were to use this one on a bounce strategy as well, this is a lot of fun. If I cancel, oh, sorry, before I move that, any questions on that? That part makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sick. So if I was to be looking for a short of alpha, another way that I can approach this is I can go uh, alpha short, and I want to bounce off this, I can say, look, I'm going to have my stop, I'm on my take profit down here at this point. It's going to have to be down here. Um, it's that that's where my support in the past was. We had a we've identified support. Cool. That's where I'm going to get out. Uh, I'll put my distance to activate of 0.1 and my distance to confirm to give me that bounce. It's rejected. Cool. I'm taking this entry here. Uh, play clean up on these, switch this part here around. If I was to put my take profit down here, and my entry pretend that happened up at this point here. I've now got a seven to one if I had my stop loss. Sorry, let's put my stop loss 2% on the other side of trend line. There we go. So about a seven to one there. Whereas if I shrinkify this and I copy paste it and I move it over here, I've now got a, a, a trade that will automatically invalidate itself if the, the risk reward gets too crap. Now at this point, we've gone from a seven as time goes on, the risk rewards getting smaller and smaller. Now it's a three. And as we move it forwards over time over here, it's going to take the entry. If we get a really, really great bounce at this point, at this third point here, right at the end of the wedge, Vem is going to say your risk reward sucks. It's just going to cancel it for you. Mm -hmm. So there's another way that I really like to use. Uh, I probably should have said what the point of that one was. Other side of trend line. Like yeah. I know that I want to use that line as a rejection point. So I can just set that as something pretty close on the other side. And I know that it's going to give me my risk reward is going to take over if it, if it just sucks. And because there is a, uh, it is a wedge and I have a fixed take profit, that means my entry is dynamic. My stop loss is dynamic. My risk reward is only going to get smaller. If this thing gets forced into the edge of the corner, it's just going to kill itself. Yeah. I guess by that stage, you can put an expiry too. So not, but that wouldn't yeah, matter absolutely. anyway. I mean, it's going to be otherwise RR or expiry. So 
Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Mm. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That is cool. All right. Has today helped you? Anthea? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I'm like <laughs> raring to go, ready to, <laughs> to put on some trays and have a go at all this new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. No, thank you so much for taking the time to do it. No, that's okay. Thanks yeah. very much for helping us in the community. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> it's the least I can do. All right, cool. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Um, I'm glad we recorded this one. Um, I would love to do another session with you in future as well. Um, hey, give it a week or two and do another one. Let's see how you're going with, uh, yeah. with applying this new stuff. Excellent. Sounds good. Cool. And another thing I'd love to cross off there, just because I do have stuff here and I can show it to some people, is Macro Recorder. Man, I'm going to go and do a break and retest off Alpha. Alpha, long break and retest. I want to add my condition. 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 I use all of those ones. Let's go on. Oh man, that's it's so many clicks. It's a pain in the bum. Um, so there is a thing out here called Macro Recorder. I actually wouldn't mind if someone wants to uh, be my guinea pig. We'll do a session together where I can get this set up on your computer. I'll share you these files if you're interested. Because uh, then we can turn that into a tutorial series, make sure that they're all good. Um, if I go break and retest long on a downtrend, you can see, see here what it's going to do. It says, I'm going to click all these buttons for you. Uh, and the end result is going to be this. If I go alpha, my keyboard shortcut is control shift B. If nope, I need to get rid of that part. Sorry, that's because I have my bookmark showing. I get rid of my bookmarks. Um, I go break and read test alpha and I press control shift V. Now I'm hands off. It goes ahead and puts everything the way that I want it for a break and read test. And I can go, great. It's already done and set up for me. So the emotion has just been completely removed here for me. Uh, what's it whinging about? Don't forget to pick your account because I didn't set that part there up in it. Um, and my take profit is invalid for whatever reason. Shut up. Now you're happy. That's just a stupid bug. Uh, there we go. So now I've got a full setup of everything we're just talking about with the Anthea there, which is going to be a stop loss other the side of trend line of half a percent. Uh, my take profit is set something and I'm fully set up for a break and retest with an invalidation. And all I've got to do is move my expiry date over to the end of the wedge and my take profit and stop loss where I want them. Makes it so much faster. I want to build this thing into Bama, but I don't have time to do it. Damn it, got other stuff to do first. Um, yeah, that one there is a really, really, really cool thing. Because once you know all of what these bits and pieces are, just speed the process up. That is cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's me just more bragging about something cool that I think is a lot of fun and just showing <laughs> off. Um, yeah, cool. That is a pretty good session for today. Thank you so much for organizing and us and reaching out, Anthea. Not a problem. Anyone else have any questions or anything we can help you with while we are uh, on the call? One from Christian in the chat. Yeah, I might. Yeah, I was going to say I can just ask instead of uh, you reading if you don't have one to uh, leverage in yep. terms of um, obviously we're, that's what, what I was asking about buy a bit. So FTX, for example, say what are we up there one or two x? How does leverage play into account when we put up trades? I guess if there's if we don't have five times, ten times, and so on, does that just mean we can put less trades on? or how does that affect it all? Yeah, correct. So uh, if I look at my one as an example, let's go BitMEX, FTX. So BEMA is automatically gonna know what leverage you can do. So we go on, we've got your API keys, thanks for that. We ask the exchange every single minute, what are the settings inside of your account? Uh, what are they set to? Uh, and part of that is what is your maximum leverage that you're allowed to have? So if we come and put in an alpha and go add trade long cross, just to shut it up, get past it, come to this part. I've already chosen my Vema Trader account. Uh, it's automatically goes, Richard, your max leverage that you can do is two. And because the max it can do for two, it knows that it has to play with the position size to figure out what it's going to do for that trade. Um, now, the other part we do on this part is if I move this stop loss really close, I should get a warning here at some point if I can make that happen. 5% of count risk margin. There we go. Not enough margin is before we let you actually set up the trade. Uh, we do a, we do a math check on there to say, all right, cool. How much is this going to of your account? Is this leverage and this position size going to take up? Uh, we warn you if it's going to be above um, uh, eighty five percent of your account margin. 
uh, we just say, hey, cool, this will this could technically enter, which is fine um, if it's a warning. But in this case here, it's now saying, look, because you've said 5% of your account risk, there is that is a, an impossible trade to do. Uh, we cannot pull that off because it will need more than 100% of your margin. So Vemo automatically just does that leverage check for you. And if you're on, say, uh, BitMEX, which does have 100x leverage for Bitcoin, Cool, it's much less of an issue. We know that, well, that position size, that leverage amount, we can make that happen with that part of a stop loss. Yeah. What does okay. it do when your stop loss is lower than your liquidation level? Uh, so we do a check on that one. Based on where you're going to put your stop loss, if your liquidation level would be, we put a buffer in there, actually. Uh, we figure out where would the liquidation level be? And then we go, right here, let's deleverage this thing here so that we can make okay. sure that the uh, we don't want to be getting too close to your leverage. Um, if you are getting very close to your leverage, we'll one, send you an email, and two, we'll add on an orange line into here to show you this is your liquidation level. Like liquidation level moves uh, constantly. Um, so we just we just don't even want to be playing with that. No, we don't, don't want to be liquidated on that. Um, yeah, so that happens there. So if we go, well, hey, the leverage is already uh, pumped up. Let's deleverage it. Deleveraging it isn't going to solve it. Then we'll just reduce the position size. But then we'll again tell you, hey, this is not actually going to be risking that much of your account percent. It's so cool. You don't really have to think about any of this stuff anymore, hey? Yeah, it's, it's so good. If I had to go back on the exchange and actually place a trade, I like put in the position size and stuff. Man, I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know if you noticed, but I recorded a few videos over the last few weeks just to remind myself how to do it. <laughs> I've, I've seen your videos and I'm, I didn't want to be a cheeky bugger and comment on that. Dude, just use Venmo. You don't have to think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's when, when people uh, message me and go, you know, how do you, how do you actually do these things? Like, I, I actually just use Venmo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Press the button. It doesn't matter, man. Um, yeah. The other cool thing about this is that this is, you'll see it, it says estimates here, Christian. Um, these are estimates based on the entry in the current price. We're also, we get from the exchange every time we get a new piece of candle data, we get the liquidation, we get the, um, the whatever the other bits and pieces of the math are. Um, the insurance fund, whatever it is, the amount that's going to make it go positive or negative. Um, we're getting all of that data. So when we take the entry, these figures here may actually change. We might go, oh, cool. Based on where the, uh, the, the entry is now, because you had candle close of up here and your stop loss is down here and you take profits there, well, that changes the math. So therefore, it's less position size needed and probably less, less leverage as well. Oh, you mean you take the funding rate and so on into accounts? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And that all just magically happens. So cool, you set it up. Uh, when we say set and forget, we really do mean, hey, cool, you shouldn't have to worry about your position size again at all. But coming back to your question, what does extra leverage get you there? Extra leverage means less margin used. So if I had this same setup on FTX, uh, on Bitcoin and Ethereum, I couldn't be in both positions at once because one of them is going to use 64% of my margin. Yeah. Whereas on BitMEX, I could be in both of them at once because more leverage means less margin. Actually, that's a good. I, I actually I don't know. I know one of one of my close mates uses OKX. I think OKX allows up to fifty or something, doesn't it? Fifty or hundred or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Bad, OKX enough. has got some rather happy leverage amounts. Okay, so that so that wouldn't be an issue if you use OKX, then I guess. Correct. No, no, fair enough. This looks great. It's like I said, I was talking to Anthea briefly yesterday, and I was just saying, look, okay, this just means more trading rules as well. Like you can't just cheat and go, ah, I'll just jump into this trade and see what happens. Like. Oh, I'm guessing you can do that with Vemo as well, but I feel like that might actually stop you from doing a lot of that and actually uh, set the trades up properly. When we do all of our testing, what we need to like, whenever we do a release, we test the crap out of the system. Uh, and so if I want to trigger an entry right now, I will put my take profit, my, my entry below current price. And I'll go set up, add uh, long and cross. Cool. I can go ahead and just enter this position. It's got everything it needs now. It doesn't need anything else. I'm on FTX, so I need to pick my sub account. Yeah. Um, but if I only had one, then it'd be done. Uh, so now it's done. That's just going to happen. Um, when we're doing our testing and stuff, I will tend to just like not even move my take profit stop loss. All I'm doing is checking, does it actually enter? And I'm not concerned about that because the risk reward currently right now sucks. Uh, whereas the minimum risk to reward says I'm not going to take the entry. So I can quite happily right now say, submit this trade. And I know that Vemma is just going to say no. Yeah. 
exactly it's just nice to have that thing yeah <laughs> they're going don't be a, don't be a moron <laughs> yeah your rule says this i'm going to save you from yourself check into yeah. there oh look it's already closed and why did it close because your risk reward suck mate yeah no that's awesome all right well i guess uh on to all cakes we go and i'll give this a start for the weekend that's the spirit <laughs> Yeah, I knew you would be excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, good. Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. No worries at all. All right, cool. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for joining. It is nearly 3.30, which means we've been going for about an hour and a half now. Awesome. Hope you had fun, Anthea. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me and getting this call set up. No worries. Thank you very much.